It's Thursday. Thanks. It's Thursday. That's what she said. Um, we're, we're doing our, our chat again. Lindsay is here, and Dan is here, yeah. and Roland is here, but also we've got Michael and Will too. <laughs> it's good to see you both again. It's been a bit. I don't know how long, but six, no, I do. It's, I think it's been six months. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds like a long time because it is. But, you know, we talked on the internet, so it doesn't feel quite that, quite that long. I, um, I wanted to try and make a note of shooting something before it got super, super dark. It's getting darker earlier and earlier. Because right now, the sun is just about down, and it's what? Almost eight? Oh, it's eight on the dot. Cut to Stephen, much later, very tired. <laughs> then... Reverse the tape to explain all the things that occurred between the last clip and now. Let's talk about it. First off, it was great to see everybody again. Nice to see uh, Will and Michael. I've, I have not seen them since March. It's seriously been that long. So wonderful to see them. I think they'll probably uh, start hanging out with us on, on Thursdays as well, which is nice. Um, today has been really, really nuts because... I already had so much to do, and then on top of that, Nintendo dropped a Direct out of nowhere today. We've suspected for quite some time that there was going to be a Mario-themed Nintendo Direct, because this is uh, Mario's 35th anniversary this year, and then also um, there had been some rumors about some Mario products, and then also... Nintendo had reached out to us to um, give away copies of Mario Odyssey, which, you know, could always just be a nice gesture, but it was, you know, very on the nose for the 35th anniversary thing. So the Direct dropped out of nowhere during breakfast stream, and we'll talk about the Direct in, in just a moment. Um, but <laughs> it was coming on top of a day that was already extremely, extremely busy. Um, most of my evening has been spent... If you look over there, you'll see that that is uh, RPG Maker. I had to finalize stuff. And things were, like, mostly finalized, but they weren't completely finalized. So I had to um, I had to go through and just double, double check everything. Make sure that it was exactly what I wanted it to be. And then I uploaded it to uh, itch.io. Itch um it just seems like the best place to put this sort of thing. I don't want to host this on my, my site forever and, and deal with the bandwidth. And Itch.io is set up for this. I, I had to make an account um, and you know to upload the game. And uh, I was looking through all of like the features, and it's extremely extensive. Like, if you have an indie game, you should put it on Itch.io. Like, it's kind of ridiculous how many options they give you. It's, it's really, really wild. Um, but what I was able to do is I was able to upload the browser-based version of the game because RPG Maker will export to HTML5. So I was able to, to post that to Itch.io and then also include Windows and Mac downloads if people wanted that. Because whenever you're playing it in the browser, whenever you have to do map transitions, it has to load, which takes a little bit of time. So uh, if people want to deal with that and just play it in the browser, they totally can. But if they'd rather download it and play it themselves... I made that available as well. Um, and there's so many more customization options I could have put on the page, but were just pointless for this very stupid game. Um, but if you were serious about doing development, Itch.io is a good place to, uh, you know, to post your stuff, I assume. From what I've seen, I assume. I don't know how the back end is uh, with, like, uh, getting uh, payments and stuff, but I have mindset to, like, no payments because... No, no one should have to pay <laughs> to, to experience this wonderful game. Anyway, let's um let's back up uh to the beginning of the, the day and the direct. Uh, we had to we did a reaction to the direct, um which added a little more time, but uh, the direct itself was was fantastic. Um, if you haven't seen our reaction, that's posted over on Steven Plays. But uh, you know, this was a rumor that had spread a lot earlier this year, several months ago. And um, it's clear that they've, you know, they've had this ready for some time because when they dropped the news today, it was like, oh, it'll be available in, in two weeks. 
So Mal and I watched the direct. We were excited, did the react, posted it. And only after we posted it did we see people talking about the fact that it was limited time. We never caught that whenever we were watching the direct. We saw that um, the uh, the Battle Royale game was, was limited time, which I thought was odd. Um, but I guess, you know, in the moment I just chalked it up to, huh, that's weird, but maybe they're just testing the waters for like a full-fledged Battle Royale game that they would introduce later, which is a complete possibility. But it was uh, it was only after I posted it that I saw that uh, the games themselves, the, um, uh, I don't know if it was 3D World and 3D All-Stars, but it was definitely 3D All-Stars. Um, physical and digital versions are only available until March. And my first thought was like, why? What? That, I don't understand. But then I saw someone had posted online about uh, the same mentality of the Disney Vault, which is this concept of Disney releasing something, but only for a limited time. And if you don't pick it up, you'll never be able to get it. So maybe they're doing something like that. Um, the cutoff date is the end of their fiscal year. So it's definitely a tactic to get you to pick up the game, you know, this holiday season, um, which is which is not cool. But the, the, the real question is, would they follow through on that? You know, would they, would they make a game and say, here it is, but you only have, I mean, from September to March, six months, you only have six months to get it and then it's gone. Would they actually do it? I don't know. I don't know. The thing is they've pulled this before with the, uh, the NES classic and the super NES classic because there was never enough supply to meet demand. And because of that, the demand was always extremely high. And they continued to sell those, and, and then they actually like brought them back, and they still sold well. So, you know, would they do this? I mean, they could. Do I think that they will? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. One, um, one theory that I've read uh, some other people talking about was that uh, they may stop selling it as a collection at that point, and then they would continue to sell it digitally, but they'd be individual games. Maybe, maybe. I mean, like, on the one hand, it would be stupid, right, to not keep selling the games. They make Nintendo money. But on the other hand, there's been plenty of times where I've seen Nintendo do things where I'm like, you guys hate money. <laughs> really strange decisions, and you hate money. <laughs> But uh, they definitely like money for right now because uh, I, I feel like, to some extent, this is definitely um, trying to create a sense of urgency in the, cons in the consumer to pick it up before it's gone. Um, so whether or not that'll work, I guess we'll find out. There's a, there's a, a wide generation of people that grew up with these, these three games, 64, Sunshine, and uh, Galaxy. And the question is... Will they pick it up in the? Will they pick up this collection in the next six months? And probably, the game will probably sell extremely well. And I'm I will be very perplexed if they decide to stop selling it. But regardless, they'll probably sell. They'll probably sell very very well. But I can't imagine they would just stop. Anyway, I'm not going to continue. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it's very, very late. Uh, much later than I, I expected it to be, but uh, I had to get all of this stuff with the game done. Um, and now it's done. We did a stream. We made a game. The game got proper ending, a bunch of little fixes. It got finessed. And now it's playable in a browser, or you can download it. General public, and it's exciting. And now that it's done, and fingers crossed there's no bug fixes, because um, I actually had uh, patrons do bug testing uh, last week. Um, fingers crossed it's fine, and now I can step away from it and move on to other things, because there's plenty of other stuff to do. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?